This week on CrossFeed. Is Aslan Jesus or not? Is there a war on Christmas? Which politicians are Christian? A nuclear attack in church? Did Jesus kill his children? Hello, everybody. Welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. I'm Pastor Jim Butler at St. Luke's Lutheran Church out here in uh, Dedham, Massachusetts. Hey, everybody. Good to be with you again this week. Yep. Did you have a good week, Jim? Mm. Yes, I did. Long week. Long week. Getting getting very tired. Eyes are very tired and itchy tonight. They want to keep wanting to close. If I fall asleep here, folks, don't blame me. Just because Dale dull, that's all. <laughs> that's right. You know, then if, if if Jim falls asleep, he'll have the experience of of what it's like for the members of his congregation when he's preaching. <laughs> I was going to say yours, but that's okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> are you kidding? That I had one guy tell me one time, he said, I can never go sleep with you, man. You, you, you're, you're too loud. <laughs> you're too intense. Hey, my microphone wasn't working today. Nobody knew. <laughs> So, okay, I, and I saw on your um, Facebook last night something about, uh, you know, watch it on online. So I wondered if you guys are going to have church with all the snow you've been getting out there. Hey, you know what? I was stunned because, yeah, we have been getting a lot. And we had, like, I, I don't know what the num- the actual number was. We had a lot of people in church today. I thought it was going to be really sparse because I thought even though the roads were pretty good and, and, and it hasn't really hit yet, it's kind of supposed to hit overnight and my kids are, you know, bound to determine that there's not going to be school tomorrow and stuff. Um, but it hasn't really hit yet. I mean, we had Bible class tonight yet. Um, but, uh, it, it's, it struck me that, um, I figured, well, you know, people just go, ah, it might get bad because it was raining this morning. And by the time um, service was over, the it was like rain mixed with snow. And I figured people are just going to go, eh, I'm not going to chance it, you know. And uh, so, but no, we had a really nice turnout today. Yeah. We had uh, three families gone, uh, which was strange. But uh, we also had, um, we were getting some freezing rain up here this morning. So some people, the first service was really badly attended. Some people said, we're just staying home. <sighs> I'm not going to risk it out there. A couple of members did some black ice on their driveway and stuff like that. So, Well, by the way, just a couple of, of notes, um, both regarding our audio and our video. Uh, for some reason, Jim sounds like he's in a tunnel tonight. We're not sure what's going on. Uh, as far as we know, he's not in a tunnel. Um, and... Uh, <clears throat> But, uh, you know, I, so I'm not sure what is going on with the audio in case um, people are going, oh, what's going on there? Um, and also with the video, I, I realized, <laughs> this is kind of sad, really, since I edit the video, um, but I noticed that it was doing widescreen the past couple weeks. But not true widescreen. It put the black bars on there, so if you're watching it on a widescreen monitor, you, you get the black bars and, and you end up with black bars all the way around. <laughs> So, so I have to apologize to anybody that was sort of annoyed with that, and you know, and and, and if you're anything, I tried to get it to work. You know, I, I thought, well, it'd be cool if we could really make it widescreen, <laughs> but no, <laughs> doesn't work that way. So, uh, sorry about that. Uh, just had to note that things should be back to normal this time. I think it was that uh, sort of special effects stuff that I was using, but I couldn't find a way to adjust it back to normal. So. Mm-hmm. And I, I have words of sadness and, and, and deep, you know, condolences for all the Bear fans out there who got killed, watched their team just get killed by the Patriots, as well as words of joy for the um, Green Bay fans who watched the Bears get killed by the Patriots. So, um, you know, I, I know how that, I used to be out there and uh, in Chicago and well, let's just say the monsters of the midway were more like the kittens of the courtyard today. Uh, <clears throat> well, you know, between the the bears and the you know the Vikings dome falling in, um, I, I think God's smiling on the Packers. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder how I'd feel as you know, get to go play at 
Ford Field. Yay. Um, I'm trying to figure out how we can turn this into a segue to some place, but I just don't know how I can do that. Um, so where should we begin? Well, at least it wasn't disrupted by a nuclear attack. Okay. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> All right. So this is in Fort Wayne. There's been several congregations, um, most notably uh, on December 5th twice um, at uh, Pathway Community Church um, and the chapel. They, A man uh, in the church that attended services interrupted the service by shouting, there's going to be a nuclear attack in New York. There's been at least five instances in multiple churches the past couple of weeks. He's losing his mind. So I like the, um, <laughs> there's a quote from one of them. It says, uh, he had sort of a crazed look in his eye. You could just kind of tell that he was not all there mentally just by looking at him. <laughs> so, Is he a member of the Westboro Baptist Church? <laughs> Yeah, they're a whole different kind of crazy. <laughs> okay, I'm mean, just talk about you know people aren't always quite aren't quite there all the way. And um, screaming but, at people uh, for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm. Um. Um. Yeah. I. Yeah. The, the 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 Department of Homeland Security will not comment on whether or not the man's a threat to the community. <laughs> um. You know, they said he's not doing anything violent. He's just getting up and yelling this. Mm-hmm. Uh. And uh, they, they, they won't um, reveal his identity. It says, um, uh, 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 um. on the other hand, apparently he, uh, um, uh, on his Facebook, whoever this guy is, has warnings of nuclear attack. And he's got a YouTube video warning of nuclear attack. So I, you can probably, you know, from that, try and figure out who he is. Google him, yeah. Um. Okay, so here's the question. I, I saw this. I thought, oh, wow, this is kind of bizarre. Okay, so the first question is, all right, if this happens to your church, what do you do? We should flee in terror. Yes, that would be the wisest course. <laughs> Call the police and have them, have them escorted out of there. Yeah, you, you hate to send anybody away, but he's disrupting the service. You know? Right. So, well, and also for his own good. I mean, mm -hmm. he needs to be in, you know, some place where he's going to be kept safe. He could be a danger to himself. He could be a danger to somebody else. Right, right. Okay. So here's the other thing is, have you ever had anybody disrupt one of your services? No, not anything like this. I had somebody threaten to once. I, I did a... Um, it was actually sort of a eulogy at a service. It wasn't. I wasn't doing the the funeral, and but I was asked by the family um, to to stand up and say a few words, and so I did. And um, it was a really dysfunctional family, and the um, one side of the family got really offended by some of the stuff that I said because they sort of took it wrong, and. Uh, and even after I talked to him and, you know, said, look, I'm, I'm sorry if you, you know, misunderstood or, or, or whatever, if I, you know, could have said it better. And I, I, I tried to be, you know, sort of approach it very humbly, but, um, but they were still pretty mad after I talked to him. And I mean, the whole, the whole thing was really bizarre, but they, not to my face, but sort of behind my back, um, I kind of found out that they were threatening to, I got a phone call saying, just so you know, these guys might show up for church tomorrow. They're threatening to, um, to come and, and disrupt your service. And, uh, so they didn't, um, they, I imagine they probably sobered up, you know, um, <laughs> decided against it, but I was sort of, I had to spend some time thinking about, okay, I know in advance. So what do I do to prepare for it? And, um, in this case, it wasn't somebody with sort of, you know, like this guy who has, you know, some probably some some psychoses or something like that. This is just people that were kind of obnoxious, and um, so you, you know, you handle it a little differently. There, you sort of at least try to say, "Hey, you know, stop and think about what you're doing," um, and then if that doesn't work, then you call the police. But 
My guess is the reality is they were going to disrupt, but they figured out they went to the church and had to listen to Dale preach again. So they were precisely hey, like when you're there. Well, in a small community, the other thing is like, do you really want to ruin your reputation in the community, you know? So. May, may not have much to, much to ruin there. You know? Um, yeah. So. But, but yeah, maybe, you, maybe, maybe if they ever get divorced, it would cost them their children. Oh, well, that could be. All right. So uh, this is in Anderson, Indiana. Yeah, in the same state. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, I don't know about Indiana. <laughs> um, so this is a guy by the name of Craig Scarberry, and uh, he recently got divorced, and uh, ruling granted sole custody of his three young children to his ex-wife, including, and the ruling included two references to his religious beliefs. The ruling noted that Scarberry and ex-wife uh, Christine Porcaro did not participate in the same religious training and said when Scarberry, who's agnostic, had followed the Christian faith, the parties were able to communicate relatively effectively. So in other words, when he, he left the church, then everything fell apart. Well, or at least it, you know, things were, may have been going that direction anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not really quite sure. Now, if those are the only two references, I don't see how this guy can argue that um, uh, the, that he lost custom, so, uh, that he lost uh, uh, rights based on religious upbringing. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't you know it doesn't seem to be saying that. Um, you know, uh, you know the. Uh, um, I guess this is a, a, a I don't know the the Madison County Superior Court two commissioner. I think he's not actually a judge. Um, mm-hmm. Says you know uh, um, you know uh, uh, Indiana law requires courts to determine whether divorced parents can agree on education, religious upbringing, and other issues. Uh, the case law requires me to make a decision whether or not the parties can communicate effectively about these matters and others concerning the children. I have never rendered a decision on a custody on a basis of one of the parents' religious beliefs. So it's more a matter of communication than religious beliefs, at least according to the uh, commissioner. Yeah. yeah. Now, my, my, fav- my favorite comment is this, this, this. However, Indiana University law professor Jonah Bra- Drobak, Jennifer Drobach, a family law expert, said the references to Scarberry's religious beliefs would be clearly unconstitutional lest the parents' religious practices were actually harming or posed a substantial threat of harm to the children. Well, okay. My question is, Professor, did you actually read the decision? Yeah, or just see the two comments. You know, yeah, I mean... Notice, well, notice that her statement is conditional. If, right. you know, certain circumstances... You know, as they brought her these two quotes, she says, well, it depends. <laughs> if... If it was, you know, based on this, or, you know, then one thing. If it was this other thing, then if it was harming them, then it's something else. You know, and so it, I, I would be interested to hear exactly what she said, the the entirety of her statement, because we have this well, sort of half comment here. Right. I'd like to, I would kind of wish, you know, she'd actually read the whole, said, well, I read the, the documentation and it's clearly unconstitutional the way it reads. Or it's put, it gets fine the way it reads. But mm-hmm. she didn't read the document. She's just going off what they're telling her. Right. Yeah, she's hearing one side. Or, or hearing an interpretation of the whole thing. So, because, I mean, you know, uh, uh, um, um, yeah, apparently they're, they have quite a few conflicts because, so there are conflicts on education, health care treatment, child care, and parenting, parenting philosophies. Um, and uh, we're not even quite sure what's exactly going on in the religion department here. Unfortunately, there's a lot there. We have this guy who's saying, uh, well, uh, uh, um, you know, my wife got sole custody, and it's uh, uh, completely based on my religious beliefs, and it's because I have, it has two, count them, two references. Now, out of how many pages? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these things don't tend to be a couple paragraphs. <laughs> right. I lost my children due to courtroom games and religious bias. Um, 
you know. Okay, so so what is a courtroom game, buddy? I don't know, but you know, some foggy Christmas Eve, all the reindeer might love him. But, That's you know. true. Yeah. <laughs> So, but he's planning a rally at the courthouse in support of father's rights. Now, okay, I do have to say that um, in my, one of the things I, I do have noticed about divorce is that a lot of times the the the, the, um, the father is considered almost a second class citizen. I mean, the, the uh, rights go to the mother. The, uh, a lot of times the mothers are almost automatically given um, full sole custody. Um, you know, the fathers are given quote visitation rights unquote. You know, so oh good, I get to go visit my kids. Um, you know, so a lot of times there can be some real issues there, and uh, I I agree with his thing on fathers' rights. The problem is is that if you're going to have jo- joint custody, which is fifty fifty, then you've really got to have very, very good communication between the two parents and very much the same rules. Because otherwise, to try to, you know, follow different rules for half the time at each house, uh, you know, it's just not going to work. It's just too confusing for kids. That's yeah. the other thing. We're not, we're not given any idea of how old the kids are other than they're young. Right. There was, um, you know, I, I think I posted on, if uh, anybody follows me on Twitter, there was uh, an article on talking about divorce that that kind of plays into this and and that is um it was talking about sort of good enough marriages marriages that aren't great the spark is gone whatever um but it was this article was suggesting that parents should still stay together because it puts a undue burden on kids because um you know parents sort of provide the world view for kids and and when something weird comes along the parents help sort of normalize things and stuff like that and they said you know that if you have parents from um you know from very different backgrounds they can sort of bring that all to the table and, and help the kids sort through all of it by working through it themselves. Mm. And they said that when parents split, then it's left up to the kids to sort through all this stuff because they're hearing two contradictory things and it, it really puts a huge burden on the kids. Now, the thing that struck me the most about this article, which I, I thought was a very well-written article and as a child of divorce, I really appreciated it and agreed with it. Um, but the the thing that really struck me about it is um, the place where I read it, the Huffington Post. Mm. <laughs> I was just like, whoa. <laughs> it generated a lot of controversy in the comments section, too, as you might imagine. <laughs> I imagine it did there. But, I mean, it's, it's you know, I, I like the idea of the good enough marriage. It's okay. It's not the greatest. It's good enough. You know, a lot of things in life are good enough. Right, right. You this know, wasn't saying uh, that, you know, it wasn't talking about, uh, you know, abusive situations and things like that. It was just saying, you know, if you're, there's something to be said for staying together for the sake of the kids. Well, I, yeah, I, I think that, you know, sometimes there are, yeah, uh, 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 you know, but we can, we can deal with things and, and just kind of deal with them. So, uh, I don't know, but my guess is this guy's not going to have a very Merry Christmas. Yeah. You figure he's going to post okay. this, uh, the, uh, the Grinch report or Grinch yeah. alert. Top 10 unnecessary things for a church to be doing. This, wow. <laughs> this really rings up there. So this is the, um, First, uh, First Baptist Church of Dallas, and uh, they they created a website called GrinchAlert dot com. Yeah, the first ba- was this Chris Wells Church? No, uh, Reverend well, uh, Robert yeah, Jeffress. Robert Jeffress is there now, but I'm wondering if this is the, this is the one that W. A. Chriswell was when, once pastor at. I mean, he he'd be long ago, but he's a, a real fundy guy. I wonder if this is his his the church. He's the guy who also engineered the conservative takeover of uh, the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, I don't know, but uh, now no, I see First Baptist. So if it's not one of our listeners out there, if you remember which church Criswell was at, is this the right one or not? But anyway, yeah. <clears throat> so I have no idea what that meant. Their thing is, um, 
they want to nominate groups that shut out expressions of Christmas and their interactions with the public via marketing, advertising, and public relations. And so you can put it in there and, uh, you know, complain about the fact that they say happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas, and they can be on your nice list or your naughty list. Yep. And so anybody can go uh, to this website and post uh, your, and so I, I went there just to check it out. And, and so like, for instance, Delta Airlines, though I am a frequent flyer with Delta, they did not mind offending me a Christian with an email stating happy holidays from the Delta family. Like, that offended you? Get over it. (laughs) Checked out books at the library, tested by saying Merry Christmas. And I was told the same thing. So So. I I like one person says that Target is, you know, was on the nice list. And that somebody else says Target was on the naughty list. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this one was interesting. Sonic um, in Oklahoma City. Uh, After wishing a car hop a Merry Christmas, he said, I wish I could say the same. Asked if he was having a bad day, he pointed to the holiday drink cup and said, we can only say happy holidays. Um, so, uh, you know, okay, so here's here's the thing. I've, I've thought a lot about this, um, and, and a lot of businesses are going with the Merry Christmas thing because of stuff like this. They're afraid, okay? Now, I this past Wednesday, if you, if you go to... Um, if you if you go to shepherdtheridge.org, you can listen to my sermon from this past Wednesday. We're doing a series um, called Thought, Word, and Deed, and uh, and so mine. It was my turn to preach uh, this week, and um, and and so I, I did it. Mine was on word, all right. And so I talked about different words uh, connected with uh, Christmas and things like that, and um, and this season, and. I said, you know, you have this this whole sort of happy holidays, and, and, you know, if you're responding by going, I say Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, you know, <laughs> like, there comes a point where the word Merry just sort of disappears, <laughs> because there's nothing Merry about your attitude, you know, <laughs> and I think what really all this, what this comes down to is that we can't, we can't expect the world to not act like the world. We can't expect people who are lost to not act like they're lost. Uh, I like, um, on the nice list, the Salvation Army, the Belringers said, you know, where I would hope they would. (laughs) There's someone in my head, but it's not me. So, hey, even the Disney stores on the nice list you know? Yeah. Yeah. So see uh, what, what people should do is go and put their, uh, put their business up on here and put it on the nice list. It's free PR. <laughs> I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Now viewpoint bank asked that they were going to put up a tree or celebrate Christmas was told that Viewpoint does not celebrate Christmas or trees. They do have poinsettias setting around. And boy, he said, I wish we could. Well, you know. Um, Any monkey business is ill-advised. The um, University of, of Illinois, no Christmas tree, no manger scene. You know, and... Here's what it comes down to. You, this is this is something where this is the same thing. We've talked about this before with like the major scenes on courthouse lawns and all that kind of stuff. All right, whose responsibility is it to proclaim the incarnation of God in Christ? All right, I would mm-hmm. say that that responsibility does not land on Devry University or. American Airlines, excessive use of holiday, no mention of Christmas, with a name like American Airlines. Come on. <laughs> like, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> now, you know what my absolute favorite comment on this is? Now, I realize you put your name, first and last name, and then you have to submit it for approval. Right at the top? Uh-huh. Okay. My favorite comment is from Chipotle, uh, the, the burrito place. They've been firing employees based on ethnicity and rumors of illegal immigration checks. <laughs> Obviously, they don't. 
check these out real carefully. He's <laughs> 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 talking about not in the Christmas spirit. <laughs> so yeah. <sighs> uh, what's another one? I guess some of these comments. Um, Marshall's Grain Store. Fort Worth, after buying bird seed, cheerful employee told me, Merry Christmas. I recommended her. She said that the, uh, the manager had discussed the matter had been discussed with their store manager. The manager said he didn't have a problem with it. So. Yeah. It, it's what it comes down to is that you ex- people expect businesses to act Christian, Right. This is not a Christian nation. There's no such thing as a Christian nation. In fact, in places where there are Christian nations, like, for instance, um, um, uh, Norway, um, and, wait a minute. I was getting mixed up. Norway and Sweden, is, are both of them? Or is it? No, it's Sweden. Yeah, but the, I, I can't remember if Norway is is okay. George is Norway a a a state Lutheran church, but Sweden definitely is. Yeah, okay. Oh, I know I know Sweden is. All right. Um, sorry, I always get them mixed up because anyway. Um, so okay, you look at Sweden. There you have an official Christian, um, you know, Lutheran even. Uh, never quite understood how it you could have a state, um make the state church a, a church that has a two kingdoms theology. But um, <laughs> that being said, um, you know, there's an example of, of a Christian nation, right? Which is nowadays a mostly atheist nation. <laughs> you know, look at England, another good example of a Christian nation, you know? Yeah. I, I love these comments. Okay, I've I got some more great comments here. Uh, There's a place, Kincaid's, Kincaid's Hamburgers. After checking out, the clerk told me, Merry Christmas. I responded, Merry Christmas. Glad to see many people are still aren't conforming to the overjealous minority. More than 85% of Americans celebrate Christmas, including non-Christians. I don't understand why the minority is offended if they receive a Merry Christmas greeting. I would not take offense to someone wishing me a happy Hanukkah. I would understand they take pride in what they celebrate and gladly want to spread their holiday. It's happy holidays that offend me. That's another way of saying, although there is really well over an 85 chance percent that you celebrate Christmas, I'm afraid of offending the other 15 percent. So happy holidays. Now, to a certain extent, you know, I mean, reality-wise, um, I think there is a little bit of a mountain out of a molehill here. And that stores, you know, when they make that a policy, you can't say Merry Christmas. You have to say Happy Holidays, whatever that means. Um, that, you know, they're being overly sensitive. I don't think most people are going to be offended. Yes. You know, I think they think they're barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> my, my, the next one, Elite Hair, Bedford, Texas. The stylists there are very fiendly. <laughs> Greet you as you walk in with... <laughs> Then get technical with me. F I E N D L Y. They're demonic. <laughs> <laughs> Greet you as you walk in with smiles on their faces and wish you a Merry Christmas as you're leaving. So, hmm. <laughs> they have fiendly smiles. Maybe they're vampires. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. um. I, but there was a few years ago, what was it? Uh, uh, you know, was it Seattle? You know, said celebrate the sparkle season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they would. You know, this, you get this 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 overly, you know, stuff. But some of this is really kind of sad. See, for me, I I was I was asking on uh, on Twitter and and Facebook about this this uh, past week or so. Uh, just I was curious about, and and my thought was, all right. For somebody who doesn't celebrate Christmas, do if if somebody says Merry Christmas to you, you know, what's your reaction? And and what I was thinking about is do you sort of go, ah, like, are you gonna get mad if I don't say Merry Christmas back, you know? I mean, I've got pagan friends that celebrate winter solstice uh, you know, as a 
as a hot, as a sort of holy day, you know. Um, which, by the way, you know, the whole Jesus is the reason for the season. Uh, the pagans had it first with the winter solstice. We deliberately co-opted it by by setting the date for Christmas when we did. So, well, we could argue that he's the reason for the season because he's the Lord of heaven and earth and the season wouldn't exist without him, you know. Um, as far as why we celebrate Christmas at this time of year, it's 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 exactly the opposite of what people think. Like, it's not that the pagans are trying to steal the season from us. We stole it from them. <laughs> but um, no, I, I was so I was I was talking to uh, my uh, atheist friends and that, and and uh, and one of them said, you know, anytime I hear people talk about the war of the war on Christmas. I would say that um, that Macy's and Toys R Us won that war 50 years ago. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. People are like, oh, you know, you got to say Merry Christmas. The thing is, even though if, if 85% of people celebrate Christmas, that doesn't mean that 85% celebrate the incarnation of Christ. You know? Most of them celebrate Santa. <laughs> and not okay. St. Nicholas, you know? <laughs> Or at least not St. Nicholas of Mira. <laughs> and true. But all I can say is, folks, have a fiendly Christmas this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and watch out for the illegal immigrants at Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're a bit disgruntled. <laughs> but what would Oprah think? This was this was a bizarre study. Um, it was one of those things that uh, that I I kind of the results didn't surprise me, but they saddened me. You make me sad. Right. Yeah. Um, well, I, yeah, I'm not, I've never heard of this LifeWay research before. Uh, near as I can figure out, it exists to kind of this press release. I, I, existed to really talk about themselves but yeah anyway so they 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 asked uh about oprah winfrey george bush glenn beck barack obama and sailor sarah palin um which do you believe if any do you believe are christians All right and they and, asked protestant pastors and they talked to did a thousand interviews um so well, lifeway oh, is um isn't that the the chain of stores with the Southern Baptist Convention? It could be. I don't know. But this is the Lifeway Research Center. And it says so. Ed Setzer is the president. So you know who Ed Setzer is. He's the um, church leadership um, guru. Yes. Yep, 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 yep. We read. I'm reading one of his books right now. Right. Um, missional thinking. The, or uh, coming... Breaking the uh, missional code. Breaking the mission of code. Yep, yep, that's the book. Yep, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, not a bad book. It's pretty good, actually. Anyway, um, hope you enjoy as much as I did. But anyway, so, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, some of this is kind of, I don't, I don't know why you would call and have a survey like this. Except, you know, are you really, you know, that deluded? Only 19% of pastors saying they think Oprah Winfrey is Christian. I'm surprised it was that high. Yeah, I, I'm thinking that there are people that don't know much about Oprah Winfrey. I mean, because she's repeatedly said that Jesus is not the only way, and, you know, she she doesn't claim to be Christian. No, uh huh Well, he, he says, uh, Stetzer says, uh, most Americans consider themselves crushed Christian. For many of them, the Oprahfication of American spirituality has been a good thing, yet the overwhelming majority of Protestant pastors don't view Oprah as a Christian. Well, that's because she's not. <laughs> Right. Well, but, you know, a lot of people see that, though, um, think that she is, and which is bizarre given the way she talks. I mean. Right. Well, the uh, to me, it's a, uh, 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 we all remember the very famous uh, Yankee Stadium service that took place, you know, nine, eight, eight years, eight, nine. No, next year be 10 years. Next year be 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. but we celebrate 9-11. And, um, or you know, uh, or observe or whatever, or remember. Nine Eleven, um, but anyhow, the um, um, at which uh, David Banky had his uh, our district, uh, Atlantic District President had his prayer and ending it in Jesus' name. 
And, of course, there's all kinds of hue and cry in our Senate about that. Interestingly enough, though, um, Oprah Winfrey refused to shake his hand after that service. Huh. Because he was too, she considered it too Christian and too exclusive. Wow. You know, that, that says something about the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate. David Benke was considered a flaming liberal after that. And yet, no, actually, the liberals wouldn't want anything to do with him. <laughs> He's too Christian. <laughs> right. Um, oh. So uh, they and they they said um, they really could have made a chart. It would have made it easier um, to discuss this. Uh, that uh, Glenn Beck, uh, second lowest at twenty seven percent. Right. Well, he's, he's Mormon. Yeah, he's Mormon. So, like, what? How were twenty seven percent saying that he's Christian? All right. Seventy five percent of the pastors said that George Bush is. Is Christian? Well, that's what he said. Uh, you know, he he stated that. Uh, Sarah Palin is sixty six percent. Well, she's been very, if you you know, familiar or anything with Sarah Palin, I'd say she's very upfront about the fact that she is Christian. Mm-hmm. Uh, and only forty one percent said Barack Obama is Christian. Um, now it's interesting because it talks about forty one percent that also on Obama, uh, our president. Um, but it's interesting, uh, uh, Stetzer says, Protestant pastors often have a more detailed view. They reply terms like born again, evangelical, and changed life as synonym for Christian. Uh, using their standard, the majority would not agree that President Obama is Christian, though he is mainline Protestant. Mm-hmm. Um, now, okay, so did you interview Protestant pastors or did you interview evangelical pastors? Yeah. <laughs> you just go through the... Um the Southern Baptist uh, phone book and, you know. Because the reality is, I mean, you know, Protestant should mean main line. Yeah. You know, so I'd be very interested to uh, see the cross section. Yeah. Well, on the other hand, Protestant pastors who identify as Democrats, politically liberal or very liberal or main line are more likely to indicate these prominent personalities are Christians. For example, 88% of those who self-identify as liberal, very liberal, say Obama is a Christian, compared to 31% who say they are conservative, or 12% that they are very conservative. I don't know. I'm pretty conservative, and I believe Obama's a Christian because he says he is. And uh, frankly, it was his Christian faith that almost cost him the election, um, thanks to his uh, former pastor. So, you know... uh, (laughs) I don't really understand all the the claims, but we've talked about that before. I just, I I don't get that. <laughs> well, though he said he he had no idea that what his his pastor said such such things, so apparently he he went there for twenty years, just never listened. <laughs> kind of like people in your church, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> This says the uh, the ages of the pastors also reveal differences. Older pastors are more likely to say that Oprah Winfrey is a Christian. Forty six percent of pastors who are fifty five and older. <laughs> Does that mean they don't watch this show? <laughs> Just wondering. Um, and uh, compared to only thirty percent under the age of fifty five, um, pastors in the fifty five to sixty four age bracket are most likely to say to, to say Obama is a Christian at forty eight percent. Uh, overall, 83% of pastors over the age of 55 compared to 74% of those under 55 say Obama is a Christian. So, um, you know, I mean, and the thing is, I would say, um, well, definitely uh, President Bush made some statements. And we back in the day, we, we talked about it where he said stuff that sort of sounded like uh, universalism and you know, stuff that wasn't really Christian. Um, we've talked about uh, President Obama being very clear on, on what he believes, talking about um, salvation through Christ and his sacrifice for sins and things like that. Um, although he, there was this sort of vague statement about where basically what he was saying is, I'm, i I got to be president to everybody or something like that. 
Um, but it was the way it was worded wasn't the best. But you know, again, he's pre- commander in chief, not theologian in chief. So. So what my question? Okay, this this paragraph makes no sense. Pastors in the fifty-five to sixty-four age bracket are the most likely to say Obama's a Christian at 48%. Are you a God-fearing man, Senator? Overall, 83% of pastors over the age 55, compared to only 74% of those who are under 55, say Obama is a Christian. <laughs> There's a so lot he's of got numbers the, in there. So he's got an 83% saying over 55. He's got a 74% under 55. And yet, overall, it's only 41%. Uh, um, maybe that's of those who said... No, that doesn't work out either. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, I didn't know that, you know, 83, 74, and 41%. All, and I, I don't... I don't. Yeah, you're right. There's I, no way to add that up properly. Add... Please watch Sesame Street. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. You know, that was, well, you got to keep in mind, 37% of all statistics are made up on the fly. You know? No, it's 78.3. <laughs> so, um, so, um, I don't know. It's, hmm, let me get a little bit higher. Well, it says that the, um, uh, uh, there's a plus or minus error of 3.2%. Margins of error are higher in subgroups. So, <laughs> really high. <laughs> it's about a 50%. Really, really high. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Margin of error. It could be negative five. <laughs> okay. My next question is why would you even ask this question? Of what importance is this factoid? That was pointless. You know, I I think it might have something to do with just, for one, just, I think we can, there's a lot we can learn from this, all right? For one, the influence of the media, um, or the influence of certain media outlets, right, that that promote um, or or, um, sort of encourage or don't discourage... um, certain false information being propagated. And it also has something to do with um, people's understanding of what it means to be Christian. Um, and, uh, you know, because there are those who would say, well, Barack Obama is pro-abortion, you can't be cr- Christian and, and pro which he's not pro-abortion, he's pro-choice, there is a difference. Um, but, you know, to say that you can't be Christian and pro-choice at the same time. Right, so therefore he can't be Christian. Um, you know, for that matter, there are there are those who say that we're not Christian because we didn't make a decision for Christ. We didn't pray the sinner's prayer, which doesn't appear anywhere in the Bible. But, um, <clears throat> you know, it doesn't. You mean in Acts two after Peter's sermon, and the people say, "Brothers, what shall we do?" He does not say, you need to ask Jesus into your heart. Now, I see a hand out there. I see another hand. Do I see any more hands out there? <laughs> Come on back now. Let's, let's get a rouse of, 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 um, I mean, of, um, um, just as I am here. And you all come down here. And we, we got the other apostles up here yeah, ready to counsel you. And, and so you can ask Jesus into your heart. You, you, I, I swore that's what, that, that's what happened there. Hey, man. I saw a video clip this week on like YouTube or something, um, where there was this, this woman, she was like, it, it couldn't have been the kid's mom. We're assuming it wasn't the kid's mom. It must have been like an aunt or something like that that was babysitting, who was trying to get him to ask Jesus into his heart. But he was like six, and he wasn't really interested, and in, you know, he sort of had other things on his mind. So she's trying to like coerce him or trick him into saying the words. I mean, it was horrible. It was like, just speak the incantation, you know? <laughs> but yeah, that's what faith is. <laughs> Expecto Patronum! That's 
most of the comments were made by people who do who are you know sort of from that armenian um uh background and and uh they were just they were just absolutely appalled to that it was being treated like that and um you know for them that that whole decision thing is is really important and so um <laughs> but it was it was like okay this is what it can lead to you know not saying it has to, not saying that it always does or anything like that. It was just a sort of extreme example, but, um, but yeah, see, like, now that kid, <laughs> if she managed to, you know, she could probably take the pieces of what he said where he'd say parts of it and sort of splice the video together and, and then he'd be saved. Now you but, see uh, that evil will always triumph because good is dumb. So... <sighs> You know, I think what it comes down to is you got to give people the benefit of the doubt based on what they say. All right, Oprah doesn't claim to be Christian, so she's not Christian, right? Um, Glenn Beck, he is a you know card carrying Mormon, so I would say he's not Christian. Although, then again, I have met Christians or uh, Mormons who, um, well, not real big on the doctrine of the Trinity, but other, I mean their understanding of justification was downright Lutheran. Um, and so, you know, where's that line? You know, how much did that, I, I'm glad that I'm not God to have to sort of draw those lines and, and say what is faith and what isn't and how much error you can have and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I haven't really heard anything coming from Glenn Beck. Not that I listened to a lot of him. Um, but, not much that I've heard coming from him that would sound like uh, like real Christianity, you know, the sort of core uh, Trinitarian or, or uh, you know, saved by faith alone and grace alone and that kind of thing. Um, President Bush, President Obama, they and, uh, you know, Sarah Palin, they all uh, say, yes, I'm a Christian. And so... Just expect that they're a Christian. So yes. Have you found Jesus yet? No. And finally, <laughs> who do you believe in? That's the question. So, uh, um, <clears throat> um, one of the, I don't know. Um, this week, um, the new Narnia film came out. Um, it didn't do, it, it was in first place, but only $24 million. Um, which was not a really good out, turnout for a movie that cost, uh, excuse me, $150 million. But world, worldwide, they made 110 So I think they're going to make their money back on it. <clears throat> now, it's interesting too, by the way, that uh, Disney was the co-producer of the first two movies. And now this one is um, uh, Fox took over with Walden Media. Mm -hmm. But it's Walden, Walden throughout. Yeah, it's still Walden. They still have a, a, a large role in it. But anyway, so um, uh, Liam Neeson, who happens to be a Roman Catholic, uh, was, and a I guess, yeah, and Jedi, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, uh, had um, asked, uh, was asked, you know, what he thought about. Um, Aslan, as he does the role. And he said um, he sees them as, um, uh, does, in his opinion, does not necessarily, Aslan does not necessarily represent Christ. Aslan symbolizes a Christ-like figure, but he also symbolizes, for me, Muhammad, Buddha, and all the great spiritual leaders and prophets over the century, Neeson said. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> which to which of course uh you know c s Lewis would disagree uh, <sighs> but uh all right because you know c s Lewis when asked about aslan basically said um you know i i i thought of uh what would Jesus be like if he came to a, a world like this um mm -hmm. you know obviously he wouldn't appear as a as a um middle eastern jew you know and um, so I, I read uh, a 
review um, by a Lutheran blogger, um, not like a movie blogger kind of guy, um, that he had some complaints about the Don Treader movie, that they had cut out some of the more Christian stuff in it, uh, especially at the end, little bit of a spoiler if you um, if you haven't seen it, but um, when uh, Reaper Cheap goes to Aslan's country, the um, the instead of I forget the the original wording in the book, but it it comes out as something like um, only the noble may enter or something like that. It kind of comes across as works righteousness, and uh, and and there's a few other things like the the claw um, in when Eustace uh, has to uh, goes to shed his dragon skin. He he can't get it off him himself. Um, he needs Aslan to cut. Um, into him to to free him, and they sort of tone that down. Now that one, I was thinking, yeah, that was probably to keep the PG rating. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll be interested in if they'd make another one to see how, how what they do with the, the baptism imagery, as Eustace's friend Jill uh, is goes into wash, um, so that she might be seen. Um, no, I read I'll another. The- um, I I read on. Uh, uh, Big Hollywood um, had an a interview with Michael Flaherty, the president and one of the co-founders of Walden Media. Um, and, you know, they kind of asked him about all this. And he said, all right, you know, first of all, we don't speak for these actors. You know, when we're filming, we make sure that they say what they're supposed to say. When they're being interviewed, they're on their own. And, um, and uh, you know, he s- pointed out all of the Christian imagery uh, in the movie. But he said, you right. know... Um, at the same time, uh, you know, why did these actors and that, why, you know, why did they make these sort of statements? Um, and, uh, uh, Mark Johnson, the producer made similar statements, um, that it's, uh, resurrection exists in so many different religions in one form or another. It's hardly exclusively Christian. We don't want to favor one group or another, whether these folks are, uh, whether these books are Christian, I don't know. All right. What it sounds like is, you know, let's let's sort of translate that in in Hollywood press speak. All right. It would go something like this: We don't want only Christians to come see this movie. All right. We're trying to make money off of it, and you'll enjoy it whether you're a Christian or not. Right. Uh, and <clears throat> you know, yeah, the, the the you talked about the big Hollywood blog there, and you know, he he argued, you know, that you know that yes, we we did keep this idea that. Aslan Country is this only home for you, uh, and we you know kept some stuff verbatim. Now I'm going to speak in defense of uh, Neeson's comment here for just a second. Okay, in that, in the seventh book, uh, the Great Battle, last battle. What the, the last, last battle. battle? Yeah, the last battle. Mm-hmm. And where they fight the Telemarines who are obviously supposed to be uh, Muslim Turks, uh, Ottoman Empire-type people. Mm-hmm. And uh, we have this one guy looking for their god, Tash, or Tosh, and he's wandering around. And uh, Aslan finds him wandering in, As- in, in Aslan's country. And uh, he says uh, to him, says, uh, you know, what you were looking for when you were following this this, this other god you are really looking for me, and I adopt your belief or faith as faith as my own, or something like that. There mm-hmm. is a definitely a hint of universalism in in, in in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, and which actually raises an interesting question: if they actually do the rest of the books, uh, if they get made into movies, what are they going to do with that statement? Are they going to include it or not? Um. That's a long ways away, many years from now. I, you know, I really hope that the other ones get done. Now, in this, uh, in this big Hollywood interview, they also um, there's some question about um, whether they're going to do the silver chair next. They might jump ahead and do uh, the magician's nephew, which would be cool. I'd be happy with that. So, um, silver chair wasn't really one of my favorites. And I, I really wonder whether they're ever going to do a horse and his the horse and his boy, because it's yeah, it's a sort of story within a story. 
Um, but, uh, so I, I haven't seen the film yet. Um, in that, in that one blog I read, it said that really the 3D is sort of minimal. Um, also have to understand that any book that gets converted to a movie, uh, it ain't going to be as good as the book. <laughs> You know, I mean, you just can't include any everything in there. It mentions when, uh, when Lucy's reading uh, from the magician's book, and you remember, there's this great bit about how she reads the story that she wants, um, she wants to hear it over and over again, and Aslan tells her that he's going to tell her the story for the rest of her life, and um, you know, it's obviously it, it talks about a tree and and all this, and a hill and stuff, and 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 uh, it's obviously a reference to um, to Jesus' crucifixion and. Um, and that gets cut. But at the same time, it would be really hard to depict that without it being just like incredibly blatantly Christian because she doesn't actually remember the details of the story. And um, so how do you depict that? He, Lewis kept it deliberately vague to make you figure out what it was about. Mm -hmm. And it would be really hard to depict um, in, a, in a film. And so instead she makes it snow on, <laughs> on the inside, <laughs> which is like, what? <laughs> um so yeah, they definitely changed some stuff. They threw in a, a cool battle with Eustace as a dragon against the sea serpent. And... Right. I on it on, on Mark J Johnson and um, Liam Neeson. He says the the uh, producer uh, Flattery says this that Big Hollywood. We hired Mark Johnson because he's one of the best producers in business and produced some of my favorite movies, The Rookie, The Natural, My Dog Skip. The best way to be faithful to Lewis is to hire the best possible producer. And that was Mark. He'd done a great job of the series and given the better part of a decade to making them happen. Same guy it goes for Liam. We served for months to find the right actor who could be authoritative and forgiving and comforting. He hit it out of the park for us, and I can't imagine a different actor playing Aslan. These guys are at the top of their game in filmmaking. But I don't think they're about to get that get about to get an M div from Dallas Theological Seminary anytime soon. <laughs> Well, this is the thing. I haven't seen it yet. In fact, I haven't even seen Prince Caspian yet, um, which was um, back when I first read him. That was my favorite of the of the whole series. Um, now I think probably Don Treader is, um, or or maybe the original um, Line the Witch and Wardrobe. But the the thing that um, you know, you, you listen to the the clips that I've seen where you hear. Um, Neeson as Aslan, man, his voice is just perfect. All right, there's only one other person that I could imagine doing that voice, and it's really sort of ironic because the other person would be James Earl Jones, who also yeah. did Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> right, but, but James Earl Jones has the voice. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, so, um, because yeah, you need that that sort of powerful commanding you know kind of voice so um you know it's a lion <laughs> and not a tame lion as the beavers would say so right uh that's uh actually i quoted that this morning oh yeah uh, yeah yeah i uh, um um and the, yeah with the sermon and uh uh i said that sometimes our problem is that we look for the wrong kind of jesus and uh i said uh but as as C C S Lewis said of Aslan, you know, he's 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 you know, Aslan's not a tame lion, but he's good, I tell you. Oh jeez, Jesus is no tame god, but he is good. Um by the way, also I should admit, let everybody know because i I've been kidding Dale about his preaching tonight real bad. Um I actually quoted you in my sermon on Wednesday. Uh you had told me the story about a member of your church who was glad Jesus had waited to come back so that she would know him. And uh I shared that with my congregation. So right. So, so, yeah, so that and they thought it was a cool they thought it was a really cool uh illustration of that concept. I thought so, so too. I get choked up every uh, time I think about it. So um we got some email this week. Actually, yeah, so it was just said at Joe Burnham, so it must have been when I was gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have to pass that one on to Joe. Uh it says something about Joe uh uh visiting a prostitute. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what that was a reference to. Now, um here's the thing about Joe is is that well he actually he just took a call to a church in Arkansas, um, in the same town where the Walmart headquarters is. 
But um, Bentonville. That could be it. Yeah. Um, that's that's the town, Bentonville. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I look at the church's website. It looks really cool. I think he'll do really well there. Um, or God will do really well through him. More is the point. Um, but the thing about Joe is when he was living in um, in Denver. Uh, he spent a lot of time downtown with all kinds of people. And uh, so what that was probably, you know, I'd have to go back and see what they're actually talking about. Um, and and I, I'm hoping that it wasn't like a member of his new church that was kind of scoping him out <laughs> and misunderstood something about their new pastor. <laughs> but uh, Joe is very faithful to his wife. Um, he would, If he was visiting a prostitute, it would be to share the gospel with her. Um, you know, not to... Now, isn't Joe currently out in Africa somewhere? No, no, no. No, he was in Africa um, working okay. on... Uh, he was teaching at the seminary there um, in South Africa He's, as he sort of worked his way south. Um, but then he came back and, and he was sort of in limbo because he didn't have a call anymore. And so he was kind of doing fill-in stuff and didn't really know what was going to happen. And then all of a sudden he got this call um, to Arkansas. And, uh, which was really different for him too, because he's used to urban ministry and this is anything but urban. So being from Missouri, I guarantee you going to Arkansas, that is a foreign country. (laughs) So So. enjoy yourself down there, buddy. I can say, well, folks, this is going to be it. Now, next week, as we're podcasting here from nine to 10, Dale and I will both be busily checking the football score because New England will be playing Green Bay here in, in New England next week. So you'll be able to watch it. I won't um, because oh. I don't think it's going to be televised here. So I can't get Packer games here. And I refuse to pay for like the NFL network or anything. Um, yeah, it, it should be because it's going to be a nationwide game at 820 it? on NBC. Oh, okay. It's going to be NBC Sunday night game. Hmm. So should we try to podcast another night next week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although it starts at eight twenty, man. I won't. I won't stay up to see the end of it. I'll go to bed way before it's over. So, but we 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 can podcast and we can be checking the scores during the during the podcast and stuff. So, we'll see if the Patriots tear apart the Green Bay the way they did Chicago today. <laughs> I guess we'll have to wait and see. I don't know. On the, on the other hand, Kansas City did get decimated by San Diego, so life is kind of sad, but that's okay. But I understand how you feel because I used to live in Rockford, Illinois, and best I could do is watch Chicago games. So I understand what it is to feel that you can't ever see a decent game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't watch the Browns get a decent game, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, hey, I, I, but I, I've been up here almost 20 years, so I've I kind of gotten used to the Patriots after a while, so. So, um, it, you know, you can, we can get a lot of Pittsburgh games here and, you know, I, Pittsburgh's all right. But, uh, um, so anyway, back to the, the topic. If, uh, any of you have, uh, have feedback, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you've seen Dawn Treader, let us know what you thought of it. Um, and let us know if you saw it in 3D or not. And, you know, if you thought it was worth it or, or whatever. Um, and, uh, or if anybody's ever disrupted a service, uh, you know, at your church, or maybe you wish somebody had, or, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, you can email us at podcast at crossfeednews.com, or if you're watching this on YouTube or something like that, you can uh, just leave a comment there. So next week will also be our last episode, uh, before, um, 2011. So we're going to take a couple weeks off. Um, over over the holidays, because yes, taking New Year's off too. So I was thought Happy Holidays is a little more descriptive, anyway. Because <laughs> whatever, God be with you all tonight. Have a good night, and see you next week. Yep. Good night, everybody. God bless. You.